Smith, we used a shotgun, an M1 Garand, and some machine guns. And it was a fun little game of shoot 'em up. Not quite adequate. So now we're moving on to the big guns. We have That's Carrie now. Byron on Mythbusters on Discovery yeah. Channel. Carrie has her own show on the Science Channel as well called Head Rush, teaching science and math to kids, though she's actually a sculptor by trade. Carrie's latest efforts is promoting the new Mythbusters exhibit, which just arrived at Silicon Valley's Tech Museum after a successful run at my favorite museum, the Muse Museum of uh, Science and Industry in Chicago. Thanks for being with us here this morning. Oh, I'm super happy to be here. I'm a local, so I... Yes, you are. Up in Las Gatas. Yeah. And went to Las Gatas High School as well. I did. I've, I've always been very honored to be part of the Silicon Valley, the beating heart of technology and engineering. And this this exhibit, I, I can't think of any other television show that lends itself to a, a hands on museum exhibit quite like Mythbusters does because you get to do the things that you guys do on the show. Well, most of them, I mean, you don't get to shoot guns and you don't get to blow anything up. Oh, but, man. Sorry. <laughs> but it is it is how we experience science, which is, is very getting your hands dirty. It's not just asking the questions. You get to find the answers for yourself. And personally, this is really exciting for me because it's a very family-oriented exhibit. You can bring your kids and kind of show them how to get excited about science. It's, it's safe. It is safe. safe it's very, kids. very safe. I mean, you're going to do things like run in the rain. You're not going to blow anything. Well, I did notice that I mean, it, you say it's a show for kids, and that's great because if there's explosions in, an, in a, uh, a conference center, I far rather it'd be there than at my home. But I did notice that there were some few things for adults in there. One, one that caught my eye was the uh, sober up drunk slap. Ah. Exactly how does the science Wait, is behind the, the show or in the exhibit? In the exhibit, I think. Really? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, it's in the show. There's no drinking in the exhibit. Yes, there is in the in the show. In the okay. Show. All right. Fair enough. Well, you know what? It isn't actually a kids' show. It's it's just a show that you can enjoy with the entire family. I mean, we've got a really strange demographic: eight to eighty men and women, because people tend to watch it with their entire family. It makes science approachable. And one of the, the things that I think is uh, ironic is is you've become a sort of a representative of teaching STEM uh, of women in science. You're not a scientist, you're a sculptor. You know what, none of us on the show are actually scientists. The closest we have is Grant e. Mahara. He has an engineering degree. But that's kind of the whole gag here. So you here. guys just make it all up? No. <laughs> it's, it's good yeah, science, it's advisors, right? Well, science is, it's, it's curiosity. It's asking questions. It's not some, you know, stuffy white guides and lab coats. It's, you know, getting your hands dirty. And I think that science has more to do with art than you'd you'd actually expect. I mean, it's, it's really experiencing curiosity and questioning. Before, uh, before someone, you said stuffy white guys in lab coats. I knew you meant stuffy guys in white lab coats. Yes. Or, <laughs> either way, quite honestly, before, I, I'm just going to head off that email. You know what, I'm going to say this, is, is okay, that yes. quite honestly, there's always been sort of this idea of a nerdy, White well, guy you know what, in a that's white true. Lab and actually, home. in all seriousness, the the, the, the the opening of science to to women and minorities, I guess that would be. A, I just I like to that's correct my to guess. Well, you know, when, <laughs> when I know what you meant as opposed to what you said, um, there is this purity to, to science on Mythbusters in the sense that science is really just you have a question, you have a theory about what the answer might be, and then you make some experiments towards it, which is scientific method. But you do it over and over and over, and people seem to get that much more easily. Well, I mean, that's uh, that approach to science is just, it seems very intuitive. I mean, you're just trying to find the truth to a question. And that's not something that's um, typically, when people think science, they think you're memorizing the components of a cell and regurgitating them back. Whereas it's really finding the answers through your experience. Do you think that there's um, some elements of what Mythbusters does that could be taken m more into schools today? I mean, you've worked a lot with children. What, what kinds of things would you like to see change? Well. Uh, honestly, I, I think that we are using Mythbusters a lot in schools now. Um, when we were starting Head Rush, it was sort of aimed at that, get involved with your kids, show them that science is something that you can um, do your own experiments for, you know. It's, 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 not, it's not just book learning, it's having fun with it. The best science teacher in the world is the one that blows something up. Absolutely. We all have every time. Every time. Every time. Do, do you see a movement towards that? I mean, I know like uh, the Khan Academy and there, there are a few people that are trying to sort of push more, you know, this the, the building things and not just rote learning. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm having teachers talk to me all the time about what they do in their classrooms, and it seems so far from what it was when I was a kid. Like, they're really getting involved. They're getting their hands dirty. It's great. 
There are TV stars, and then there are TV stars like you who are seem so approachable. Um, what is life like being Carrie Byron walking down the streets of Las Gatas or San Francisco? In other words, my point is we've seen movie stars that everybody points at and takes a cell phone picture at. I would imagine people <laughs> do more than that with you. They come up and because you, you are on such a family-oriented show, they feel like you're part of, the, of their Sunday nights. Well, in my hometown, I'm just me because they all know <laughs> me there. Seen you, but, yeah. um, you know, it, it is kind of funny. People do feel like they know you, and they'll walk up and just be like, "Hey, remember that time you?" <laughs> it's, it's it's awesome. I love the fact that that people are are friends with us just by watching us on TV. And do they ever come up and, and expect you to know the the laws of quantum physics, or something <laughs> to be able to sort of explain them no. simply? No, I didn't. <laughs> Lucky. ever quizzed me on my scientific knowledge but I mean the whole idea behind the show is that we are not scientists yeah. we're just average shows and we use science you don't have to uh, you have a degree uh, to, to in, in in the sciences to experience science. That's also how did you about fall it. into this though because you're, you're a sculptor yeah my parents were really surprised I got a <laughs> meaningful job with an art degree but uh, basically all of us are from a special effects background which is it's a, a field that you have to be sort of a jack of all trades and um, the show started at Jamie Heineman's M5 Studios, which did toy prototyping and props and special effects. And I wanted to do that when I grew up. So I got an internship at his shop. And my first day as an intern was the first day they started filming Mythbusters. So I kind of tripped and fell into this career. I never got into special effects. And now this is what I do. <laughs> and now look at you. Yeah. There, there, I'm sure you get this question a lot. How many more myths can there possibly be? Uh, and when, when a show a show has gotten to a certain maturity level, uh, at some point you have to look and say, what else can we do? And you, you guys do a wonderful job of continuing to make it entertaining, but you've done surely everything that can be done. I mean, we've done almost 200 episodes at this point, but there is such a wealth of myths to pull from because we have the internet, which is full of misinformation. Sure. We have all of history to pull from. I mean, we're doing myths from 400 B.C., so pretty much I think we're going to be on the I think that kind of proves my point. That's when you're talking about <laughs> 400 you're B.C. You're going back a bit. Yeah, yeah that's right. Ideas. What's your favorite one? Oh, that's really hard. Generally, my favorite one is whatever we're working on at the time because I throw myself so into it. I have least favorite ones, more likely. We have a Halloween special coming up where I was covered in scorpions <laughs> and locked in a glass coffin. That, that, that kind of hit my least favorite. But Sounds like Survivor. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? And when, when, uh, when this is, is finished, and I, it sounds like I'm trying to end, uh, lobby for the end of Mythbusters, which in no way <laughs> am I. But what are you going to do? What, what do you want to do once, once you are, fin are finished being a Mythbuster? Uh, yeah, I got to tell you, I never expected I'd be here. And five-year plans don't tend to work for me because I never know where I'm going to end up. I'm just kind of see where this leads me. But I would really like to continue in uh, developing science and education and what we like to call STEAM instead of STEM. I like to put the A for art in there. Science, Excellent. technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Fair enough. Byron. Car Carrie Byron, a Mythbuster. Your exhibit uh, opens this weekend. It's open now, in fact, at the Tech Museum of Innovation. Thank you for being with Thank us you. this morning. We'll be back in just a minute.